And this morning we have with us to kick off the best. Uh, we have Dr. Michael Johnson. Uh, Dr. Johnson is the interim associate provost for faculty success and interim associate vice president for faculty affairs. He's also a professor in the Department of Engineering Technology and Industrial Distribution. And we're very glad to have Dr. Johnson with us today to talk a little bit about his overview of campus here at AM. All right, wonderful. Hopefully, this is picking up okay. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. I'll jump right in. So our students come to us with a lot of experience using learning management systems. The vast majority of them use the learning management system in high school for all of their courses, the same learning management system. A lot of them have been using learning management systems even before then in junior high intermediate school. So they have a lot of experience with these systems. They have a lot of experience with having the ability to look at the LMS and see what is due, see where they stand in all of their courses. And so they come to Texas A&M and are expecting at least that. And so hopefully what we can do. Oh, OK, let me I'll switch. All right. So hopefully what we can do is make sure that that transition is seamless by effectively using our learning management system here at Texas a &M. So helping our students requires effective use of the LMS. And there are several things that you can do as an instructor to facilitate that. One of the things that I think gets talked about a lot, and rightfully so, is properly setting up the gradebook. And again, students, no matter what you tell them, are going to assume that what grade is shown in Canvas is real time and true. So if it shows they have a 79.9 in Canvas, then they're thinking they're going to get a Get a B. It shows they have a 70.00. They're going to skip across that C. Now you might come back and say, oh, well, I've entered all the information or I didn't actually uh, weight these various assignments correctly. But what they're really doing is they're maximizing their effort, their time, and they're optimizing their behavior on the basis of the information they have, which is that grade in Canvas. So you want to really make sure. That you provide timely feedback, updating those grades very quickly. Canvas also makes it very easy to provide no stakes feedback. So, one, two sample uh, question quizzes, things that can be automatically graded, things like discussion boards where they can answer questions or pose questions. So, all these things can be automated. And there are are a lot of great tools you will learn about both today and tomorrow that you can use Canvas to help our students learn. And again, that's really the key is providing them with an opportunity to learn. The more information that you store in Canvas, whether it's the calendar, reminders, any types of assignments, anything that you can do there is easier for our students and it's easier for you. So handing out 100 papers in a classroom like this, something I've done, takes out probably two or three minutes minimum out of your ability to instruct our students. Better to take that time, post it on Canvas, and have them get it there. And then you don't have a student that was asking that day coming back to you and saying, hey, can I get a copy of that handout? Better to just do it online, get it one of the things that someone in what was previously ITS told me, and I'll, I'll never forget this, was that one of the key things that students complain about with respect to faculty, and they complain about it to department heads, they complain about it in student evaluation, is disorganizing information in the LMS. So if you just throw all the files into the system, regardless of what type they are, students don't like that. 
So it takes some time and organize the information you put into the LMS appropriately because then the students will perceive you as being an organized instructor. Students will perceive you as caring about the class. And so something as little as a little bit of organization and thought can be hugely beneficial to you. One of the things that is on the schedule is how to import things from previous instances of your class, how to share different things across campus sessions. And so I want to reiterate that the investment that you make in your course, in setting it up in Canvas, setting it up to be student-centered, and setting it up to be efficient, pays dividends. You do this now, and then you won't have to do it again next semester. You won't have to do it again in the future. When you take from this information, you can carry it forward in other instances. I was talking to a, an instructor who took some time to put together hundreds of questions or a question bank. And so they were saying, yes, it took a lot of time, but now when they do assessments, they just add a handful of questions because there's so many questions in their question bank, they're giving every student a customized assessment. They don't have to worry about cheating. They don't have to worry about who's sitting next to whom or how things are working. They can just do that. And it's auto graded. Students get feedback. They can take that data, look at it by question, run any type of statistical analysis if they want to on it to see where students are not learning particular concepts. So, again, Making that investment case. <laughs> students care about grades. Students care a lot about grades. Canvas is the best nation way to share information about grades with students, assuming that the grade book is properly maintained and organized. So I remember when the instructor used to hand the box of homework scrap. We cannot do that anymore. I remember when we used to just take the list of everybody's name and their scores and grades on the door. Again, not acceptable. We have verbal requirements. If you set up your grade book in Canvas correctly, students can see their grades and it will save you a lot of time and effort with respect to dealing with those sets of things. Canvas also allows you to communicate effectively with students. So I don't know how many of you are teaching really large classes, but if you are getting emails in your texting and email account from students about the class, they can get lost. You can organize that in Canvas and have a discussion where you can easily track those emails and work with uh, communicating with your students. Now, this is a great opportunity to learn more about Canvas, learn more about teaching here at Texas A&M, regardless of what type of class you're teaching. But the Center for Teaching Excellence offers a lot of great programming that can help you improve your teaching, regardless of whether it's online, in person, graduate, undergraduate. And so I would definitely Everybody. Yeah. Okay. So make sure you, you take into account some of these things that CTE offers. And again, Canvas support is now part of the Center for Teaching Excellence, not the technical support, but the learning support. And I want to bring back this point because this is one of the key things that was at the heart of merging some of the LMS instructional aspects into the Center for Teaching Excellence. If you can marry the technology with evidence based pedagogy, you will be a much more effective instructor. That is a powerful use of two very important tools. Would make you an efficient instructor, it will make you someone that can definitely help our students. And this is something that our executive director for the Center for Teaching Excellence came up with. You are the key to student success. This is one of the things that, as 
someone who is very focused on faculty success wants to reiterate to all of you, being a successful faculty member means that you have successful students. You're an educational institution, and I can say with a fair amount of confidence that everybody in the administration wants you to be effective instructors because that is how our students will be successful. And so again, using Canvas effectively will help you be more efficient, it will help you uh, better educate our students. And with that, I am open to take some questions and if anyone has any or anything that people are interested in knowing. That goes to people online. I think uh, pretty modern just skip them. You got to wait unless you can give stuff, then they're giving that five. <laughs> Well, then thank you very much. I appreciate your time. I, I appreciate you taking time out of your, your last couple of weeks of summer here to come and make yourself better instructor here at the the learning next summer. So uh, enjoy the day. Thank you very much. All right, welcome back. It is nine. So we are going to go ahead and get started with the uh, first session. We worked on the audio during the break, so those of you that are online, if you have any issues with the audio, please let me know. Um, leading this session for us will be uh, Tammy Frank-Hannon from the Vet School, and Sally Hughes from the Center for Teaching Excellence will be assisting and moderating, and uh, Carlos Perez also from the Center for Teaching Excellence creative presentation. So those of you that are in the room, uh, they will be happy to help. If you have any questions, they can uh, assist as needed, but with that, I will turn it over. All right, howdy. howdy. Uh, so I am Dr. Terry Franklin and I am from the School of Veterinary Medicine. And I teach uh, both undergraduate professional students and uh, graduate students. I go from small classes to really large classes that have about 180 students in it. And so I manage quite a bit. Um, so uh, I'm tasked with talking about how you integrate your syllabus into the Canvas course. All right, so um, there are a couple of different buttons that are in Canvas that show your syllabus. So one of the things we're going to go through is what those two different buttons actually are, um, and then kind of go through um, getting your syllabus actually into Canvas. All right. So first, I kind of like to start with a little bit of how do you all share your syllabus with your students right now? This is where someone else talks. <laughs> she can't read your mic, so those online can hear. I just see the uh, book up, the Canvas link, uh, book on the home page to link to the uh, syllabus page, and of course, print that page to hold it now. Others? Okay. Anybody do something different? Online? Anybody say anything? Okay. It's too early, right? <laughs> all right. So for me, I kind of do all of the above. So um, I do incorporate mine into Canvas under that syllabus button. I do actually use the other button um, as a placeholder for me to send you to the right place because um, it's not one that's particularly helpful for students. Um, and then I also will actually print out and hand out my syllabus to my students as well at the first day of class. Um, because, because for me, my syllabus is my contract with the students and how they behave. And I want them to, anytime that they go looking for it, I want them to be able to have it, whether that's a print copy that I handed them and they kept whether it's in Canvas or whether they go to Howdy, I want them to be able to find that syllabus wherever, however they try to find it when they the first time that they look. So I don't want them struggling to find how to get to the syllabus in any way. 
right? So the handy thing about Canvas is it's a one place, one stop shop for students to find all of the content in your course. Um, and that includes the syllabus. And if you're using Canvas fairly regularly, it usually is that first place that students are going to go and try to find that syllabus um, that's actually in there. Um, there are two places um, or two ways to kind of get your syllabus into Canvas. The easiest one is the button that comes with the home template when they set up your first course. There's a button that's on that home page that says syllabus. Um, and that's the, that's the one that's easy to actually really use. It's already kind of formatted and set up for you to actually use all of those minimum syllabus requirements that are actually required by the university and set up through the faculty senate. From that, so from that page, um, it has all the things and you can get into it kind of one of two ways, but it has all the little links and stuff that goes if you ever have opened the minimum syllabus thing that's on the faculty senate's page. If you open that, um, it has all of these things and all the instructions for all of the different pieces and parts. And that exact same thing is what's mirrored in Canvas on that under that syllabus button. And so then you can just go in and you can put in your content um, for how you actually do that on that page. And so you can edit that. On the sidebar menu, if you scroll down and look through that sidebar menu on a Canvas page, there is a button that says syllabus. Okay, that's different. It doesn't actually go to the same page um, from the button that's on the home page. It is a blank page. So if you click on it, it is blank. It is default set to be hidden so that the students don't actually see it, but you do. Um, and so for the students, it kind of creates confusion if you open it up so that they can actually see it. So generally it's kind of easy just to keep that blank. And then the only person that has to remember is you. Um, <laughs> and so it just makes the A one page that's actually in there. <laughs> so using just that syllabus button, there are two ways to get your syllabus, two main ways to kind of get your syllabus into Canvas. One is just editing the syllabus that's there, um, the format that's there. So that main syllabus button on the home page, you edit that to match what you want for your syllabus. Um, the other one is to basically create your syllabus offline in something like Word or Keep in something like a PDF, and then upload that to that page. Um, that one's a little more complicated. And if you have things like tables, those don't actually always import very well. Um, sometimes they will, uh, their spacing and their timing will get off a little bit, and it won't look the way that you want it to look as opposed to you doing it yourself and putting the steps in. All right, so any questions so far? All right, so is, when it comes to editing that syllabus template to that syllabus button that's on the home page, that's kind of the easiest way to actually, actually do that. So when you click on that syllabus button, you have a new Canvas course, that syllabus button um, is going to open up basically a default syllabus that is going to uh, show kind of all the different steps. So the first part is that course information, the instructor details, and then it goes through all the rest of the little steps um, for an actual um, actual course and that minimum syllabus requirement. And so when you're there, you're gonna click on the button that's in that top right hand corner that is edit. Um, that will allow you to edit that um, and actually change all of those things. And then from there, you're going to just start editing in that template. And so, uh, so it's got that basic information that's in there. You're going to fill that out and edit the template with your particular course information. Those of you who have already done this, what are some of the ways that you've gone about sort of editing that information? How have you put your content in? Usually, I copy over previous syllabus from my last Canvas class for that type of class and go through and modify it upon the section that we discussed what's happening each week. I create a master table outside of Canvas and then copy and paste that table into it. I 
they have a credit regarding this part of this, as she said, out this import for previous semesters. Uh, but how can we double check that uh, there's not been any changes to the minimum requirements that we would need to edit? So the easy thing to do as far as checking for minimum syllabus requirements and whether the, the edit is, is go to the faculty senate's website web page. Um, so it's like faculty senate.tamu.edu. Um, go to their web page and then kind of about halfway down the page there, or towards the bottom, there is minimum syllabus requirements. You just go there, check that, and make sure that that is updated if you're working offline. Um, in Canvas, it will be updated um, to what the newer requirements are. Um, Unless something comes out really late. But I'm not starting with the template. Oh, yeah, you're not starting with the template. Yeah. So then going to Packard Senate's webpage, looking through and making sure that everything still matches up with what's there. The biggest thing to check are things like the phone numbers and things like that that go with who do you contact for title and who do you contact for disability resources, um, those types of those types of information. Just a couple of comments from the chat here. Um, first of all, what the uh, copy and paste and freehand as far as editing what is there. And someone pointed out that uh, the syllabus page itself will eventually show all the assignments that are created in Canvas. So that can either be handy or if the due dates aren't there, it could be an issue. And then uh, someone asked to repeat the questions for online, so which we will do. The mic is going around. I will, I will do a better job of that. So my apologies for that, Kristen. Uh, but thanks to everyone who is contributing online as well. So for me, I can find the get my page open. This happens to be one of my syllabus pages from one of my campus pages. And so for me, I do a bit of um, copy paste. Um, so I usually work with my syllabus offline and then I copy and paste the sections in. Um, and I do change the formatting a little bit because I just like it to look a little different. <laughs> um, but all of the information is still there and still exactly where the students expected. I don't move that information around. Um, uh, from the standpoint of things like tables and stuff like that, I found that those don't import well. Um, and so it's often better to just uh, uh, put those in sort of individually and build those tables in Canvas itself. So that's the only thing I actually build. In Canvas when they make mine. Um, so for me, I have my own classes. My classes tend to be complicated. They have both lectures and labs. And so there, this is actually set up in a table. Um, even though you can't see the lines, I've hidden all the lines. Um, but so everything stays in nice neat columns. And then for me, on the course schedule, when I get down there, all down. So the course schedule, again, I set up a table. And this is set up in Canvas itself. Um, just adding lines and then merging cells to get things to line up the way that I want them to line up um, in an actual Canvas so that you, so the students can actually see sort of that weekly schedule. Like I said, my classes are a little complicated in that I have lecture and I have lab and they have things like pages that they have to get through in the lab. Um, so all of that's in my little calendar here for the students to actually see. Okay, so other questions, other thoughts on editing and creating that content in your syllabus? So I heard about merging sections and I'm wondering what um, merging sections does to the syllabi. I believe there's a session on merging sections. We're going to do a session on merging course sections right after this. And um, we encourage you to not edit your <laughs> shell before you merge because all of that will be lost. Yes, I was going to say, I, have, I do have a class, I do teach a class um, <laughs> that, that, that is a merge section. And you want to merge everything before you start working on your Canvas page. And that includes the syllabus. And so, um, <laughs> because yes, when you, as soon as you merge it, it's a whole new shell um and then you want to you don't have to start over so don't work on it till you merge <laughs> it's the bottom line there other questions all right the other way to 
get into get stuff uploaded into that Canvas page um, is to upload an existing syllabus. So you create your syllabus offline um, and then uh, upload it to that syllabus button page is on the home page. And so when you do that, you want to be sure to go and grab the newest version of the minimum syllabus requirements off of the faculty senate home page. Okay. And then once you're there, That is a little frightening. We all wait now. Okay. All right. So uploading that existing document, um, you're still going to go to the home page. You're still going to go to um, the uh, that syllabus button. You're still going to click that edit button. Um, but then you're going to delete all of the information in that page. You want all of that information to go away because you're going to replace it with a different file. Um, so you delete all of the stuff that's actually there. Um, then from there, you're going to upload a syllabus um, that you've created offline. Okay. Um, and so uh, from there, you're going to actually hit that. Um, you'll have this little option to upload upload a document. You'll upload that document, and then. Uh, Upload the document, and then from the standpoint of you'll click on the options for that actual document and, and the link options, and then you're going to preview it in line so that it shows up not as just like a link to a file, but shows up as the actual document itself. And then go ahead and save that. Um, and then when you're done, you should end up with a file that looks like the file that you uploaded. Um, that's when you click on that actual page. And so there, are, like I said, when you import things, and sometimes things get a little wonky on the import um, and don't always line up the way that you like to when you look at in Canvas, um, which is why it's a little less reliable unless all your all your syllabus is just like first. You know, if you have tables and things like that, um, it's a little harder to get this to be happy when you make a syllabus. So questions on that question? Hold on. Hang on. She's getting really quiet. So the so the one that's in Howie versus can you repeat the question? Oh, okay. So the question is, what's the difference between the one that's all this for cross cross roster and the one that's in Canvas? So is that you mean the one that's in Howie, the one that you put in Howie? So you basically have to upload your syllabus in two places um, because they don't they're not linked to one another. Um, so you want to do some version of you put that your syllabus and how you and you're also putting it in Canvas. There are some steps for you if you're creating your syllabus in Canvas to basically then save a PDF of that syllabus that you have in Canvas that then you can use to then upload into how. Okay. Other questions. So once you actually create that syllabus in there, you're gonna leave that page, come back and then double check it and see how it loads and how it looks. So you wanna hit that button um, to see how that actually looks. I didn't put your timer. Is that the timer today? Okay. <laughs> um, so the last step, um, which is one we kind of already just answered is getting that syllabus uploaded into Hobby. And so, especially for those of you that just created in um, Canvas itself, and so you don't have an offline version, 
Um, you want to then create a PDF because you need a PDF to upload to Howdy. Howdy won't accept other file types. Um, so you're going to, uh, you can do that through Canvas. That's up. There we go. So once you have your um, syllabus in Canvas, it's done, you're happy with it, and it's ready to go into Howdy, um, you basically go to that syllabus button, that syllabus page, um, you can hit Control P um, for Windows, um, and then the Command key for the Macs, and then you're going to select to save it as a PDF, um, or open it as a PDF, whatever, whichever, so that you ultimately save it as a PDF, and then you're going to download that version, so you create that PDF, you'll download it, and then you can go log into Howdy and upload that into Howdy itself. So you have to go to your course. So you do have to, they don't talk to each other, at least not yet. I don't know if there's plans to make them talk to each other. Um, but you do have to go and then actually upload it manually into Howdy as well. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I can say what that is. Okay, so on the screen, you see an opportunity to enroll in the new Canvas Essentials course for new faculty. You can use the link if you've downloaded this file, or you can use the QR code in order to, um, to join or register to join. Don't forget, there's lots of uh, resources related to doing your syllabus in both systems as well within this community. And I'll just share one last little trick that I do. So you mentioned that this syllabus button that's on the <coughs> side of the screen, the left hand menu panel, is not one where you really want your syllabus for your students. And so I did it in this course. No, I did. Um, I know when I first started, I was really, really bad about clicking on that button. It's like, oh, that's where my syllabus is, and then it wouldn't be there. Um, so I created a link. Um, on that page, if I start doing that, I create a link on that page that goes to the home page. Um, that way, if I inadvertently open that so that I don't get confused, um, I don't just put my syllabus there. I just put a link to that home page in that uh, little window so that, because I can't make that bar go away. <laughs> um, I still see it. The students don't. It's hidden from them. Um, so they don't get confused. But so I don't get confused as an instructor. I don't put my syllabus there. And what I do is I put a link to that home page button for the syllabus to make that just a little clearer for myself.